just whatever we feel and whatever is drawing and like whatever we think is a good idea and is never like, ah, oh, we got to do more because of dot, dot, dot. It's never that. It's just kind of like, I think we should do two more songs. And it was like, okay. What's up, everybody? It's Keefe, a ghost cult man, back again with our friend. Once again, I think this is three interviews. Jeremy Kling of 666 One, different bands. Two, three. <laughs> oh, up? that like, was so, six also. Six, <laughs> so many, so many, three yeah. and three. Uh, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Man, I'm really good, and it's great to be back. Uh, I appreciate any type of chance we get to hang out and talk music and shop and all that stuff. So uh, so I'm good, man. Just got home from a U.S. tour with Venom, and that was sick. We did the West Coast run, and then got lots lots coming up in the near future so right uh, you are so busy good. and uh you were just you were actually here in my backyard literally and i was out of town that day it was like unbelievable bad luck oh but, um, man. all good though because we did get i did we did get some tour coverage that's coming soon and you have so many things going on but we are going to talk mostly today about your baby in human condition and uh this brand new record coming out this week that we are so pumped for uh turned right around a year later basically for another mm -hmm. ep uh why yeah. so fast for another release when you're so busy with 80 other bands yeah i don't know so we're kind of like led around the nose by that band though so we don't it's it's just whatever we feel and whatever is drawing and like whatever we think is a good idea and is never like ah oh, we got to do more because of dot 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 it's never that it's just kind of like i think we should do two more songs and it was like okay all right so then we just release it as two and then then our debate you know my brother and i's debate goes and we're like should what does that look like and then we start to rough out an idea and go okay and we've already like at that point already jammed like two or three songs and then because we wrote civilized holocaust together jamming it and then uh him and i and then we wrote um uh, is it ending credits or final credits what did i end up calling it <laughs> uh we did uh we wrote those two songs together and then we had everything recorded check this out this is like totally crazy this is like a long-winded story but everything recorded for the two songs there were good to go ready to rip we even had the cover recorded we had terry's bass everything we were basically ready to mix my uh grandmother had passed away and i flew to michigan to go to her service and while at her service the preacher who beforehand we met and he was like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not one of those preachers who preaches and what have we learned about psychology is anybody who says what they're not is they're totally that the whole time so he just was preaching like my grandmother was like this incredible woman of God who was only just like devout. And it's like my grandma had no iconography around her house ever. Uh, she never talked about it. She never prayed. She never did nothing, nothing like that. Maybe she had her faith and whatever that was cool. But the dude was just yammering on about how this and that. And like, I became so enraged in my head that I wrote the lyrics for Panic Prayer then sitting at her service. I wrote it and I'm like, okay. And then I wrote the entire song on drum 100% start to finish. The main thing that came chaotically at first was the bridge for Panic Prayer. Right, that whole thing. And it's off time and it's like, it's off time because my head was chaos. And it, like, okay, so I got home. I flew home later that day. That was a Wednesday. I flew home. Taylor was here because we were tracking lyrics for, we we're tracking vocals for our punk band four, which you had mentioned you want to talk about. So we'll, we'll circle back around to that. And then uh, we had to go play the first shows with Umbilicus because the singer for four is also the singer for Umbilicus. And we had a show the next day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We were opening for King Buffalo and I was doing front of house for the guy. So, I mean, I flew up to my grandma's, I flew back on the Wednesday and I'm like, wow, I have to record this and this has to make the record. And it was like, okay, I already, my drums were set up. So Thursday morning, we woke up fresh, boom, I laid the drums down in like less than 30 minutes. The, the whole song was just done. I'm like, cool, good. And then we left and fucked off and did our whole weekend of shows. And then Taylor then wrote guitars, which is now what we hear as Panic Prayer. And, uh, and that song, I had the title for it even before, had the title for it before because we we're watching escape from uh la and the main president guy he like when all shit was breaking loose and cuba was invading and you know everything was happening at the island he like fucking panics and runs and takes his bible and he's like i have to go pray <laughs> damn dude you know, my brother was like he had a panic prayer and i'm like oh, perfect i'm like that's it oh my god i'm like you know framed in i'm like yes you know so that became it 
but so like things like that we we never intend for it to be anything and then if something needs to be there it shows up and it's like at the party and it's like hey i'm here now and then this is it you know so that became everything and then we just called it panic prayer so i was like fuck that's great you know because that if that's not a testament and uh, no pun intended if that's not a testament for where the hell we're at as a society right now like i mean i don't know what is it's like oh, we're kind of spinning out of control a little bit <laughs> indeed you are in the mouth of the lion in florida um sorry for your loss uh, on your grounds you. and uh at Thank least you. you know there's a there's at least a positive that comes out of it. It's weird to me how people of all stripes, regular folks, your family, the royal you, not you, uh, religious folks make a death about themselves. It's very strange that somebody who's doing a service would make it the, uh, their soapbox. It's very odd. It's happened to me a couple of times. There's been, and one or two times it's been like, you know, you know, you actually served your purpose. Thank you, faith person, for being there for that person. Yeah. Of course, me, yeah, yeah, them. yeah. For me, for them, you know, for the departed, not yeah. But it's weird how people make shit about themselves. Very disappointing. But oh, man, he made uh, it about yeah. It was. Different. I love you also uh, going into you know. I always want to talk drum shit with you, and I love that off time. That is actually one of my favorite parts, and it's super Paul Cannibal, Dave Lombardo, you know, yep. off time, off meter stuff that I love that you do, and uh, and I don't think you do it Thank all you. the time. You work it nope. in, right? It's something you work in 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 places and spaces, not like all the time. Obviously, there's definitely some people out there that that's their thing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's that's all the time. Then it's like then it's that, you know. Right then, which I actually was like, I told Taylor, I was like, maybe this is a little too adventurous for IC, and he was like, nope. And I'm like, okay. And then we kept telling each other, we're like, well, it's an EP, and then we're like, yeah, you know, like creative license. But uh, I was afraid it was like a little bit too much because it is like, if you sit down and break it apart, it's like pretty complex and it's really silly. And I had to play it so someone else could learn it. So I mean, I had to like play it to where I could be have a video so we can see what's actually happening because it's if without that it might be difficult because i'm like subdividing subdivision yeah not a, and that was, was that also just, a rush dude, it was just in my head i didn't even oh yeah <laughs> sorry i didn't even really think about it man it just was it's what came out and it was just really it's honest and it's aggression and it's it was anger so i mean and, and that's the basis of why we do this right you know death metal is aggressive and it gets that out so if it gets that out for somebody else too if they hear that and they go ah you know and if they shake their fist and that releases some of that energy then that was what i did it for and that's what it, its intent is for and as long as you're safe about it because i mean i just read about that uh guitar tech guy who just went out and moshed for uh, uh animals as leads or animals as leaders he was out there for contortionist i think was the band and my the, oh, their opening act and he just fucking took an elbow and passed away yeah. and it's like oh my god we we knew like, dave cohen actually um i used to see his oh band. no when i lived in boston i used to see his band chugger not he also had a guitar company he was a very well loved and respected Respected luthier and he's the tech for animals leaders he was actually just at a show on his day off we don't have all the details yet we've been a little we reported that he passed because you know we had a lot of people in that community who were hurting uh-huh and uh we didn't oh, so I he know, wasn't working I know that, then i know that whole other story okay. and um you know we were a little slow to get to it because you know you want the family to have time it's always so weird to report yeah. you know like we we cover music that is all about gnarly deaths and plagues and yeah. you know but when it comes to regular people i'm a little more sensitive you know like when it's not yeah. the fantasy yeah, yeah. realm and it's not lyrics and no, and no, bree, no, bree, no. breeze i am a little more sensitive and uh but you know our hearts go out to dave's family uh by all accounts a wonderful guy and and animals is leaving oh, man. A very nice tribute to that's him. even more of a bummer he's been he's on like tour such with a... them, literally in the middle of his tour in the middle of their tour um you know as they their tech so like super brutal you always think i'm sure you've heard this before or felt this you feel untouchable on the road because you're doing what you love there's work it's yep. work and it's grueling oh, yeah. to tour i talk about this over and over the challenges of touring for everybody physically mentally everything um maybe getting your van robbed or, you know like unbel- i tell every merch table person be safe out here pay someone to watch the van um it's, yeah. wi- it's wild uh but yeah Mar- it's just so sad but um you know, in, in general, like, you know, like I'm, I'm able to, I know it's like, we, you know, this is our genre. I used was making that joke. I think when we talked last time, it was the heart of the pandemic, you, me and Taylor, and um, you had just kind of put the studio together and started working on all these bands and projects all the time. And uh, we were like, oh, you know, like we sang about plagues and and deaths and, and extinctions for years. And now we have one yeah. till our generation yeah. has one or our two generations have one. So, you know, it's wild. Life is not fleeting. I know um, I infamously uh, interviewed Thomas Gabriel Fisher and he was like, life is meaningless. And I was like, OK, bro, I, lo- I love Celtic Frost and Hellhammer Dang. and Trypticon, right? So I don't want to correct the man and be disrespectful. Yeah. I don't want to talk out of turn 
to my to one of my heroes, but also like it is and it isn't. You know, it is and it isn't. You loved your grams. It's important that you got to go stand up for her and pay. Oh yeah, yeah. you matters. know, and uh, yeah, it's just. I mean, life is what you make, and if you want to make it uh, pointless and meaningless, it will be. And going back, tying back into the energy release, if you don't want to release energy, you won't release any energy, and it'll come out somewhere. But if you can have energy and it comes out somewhere and it reacts, it causes people to react in a similar way or causes some sort of ener energy release, then I think that for me, that's a bit of a win. And I don't ever think like personally as a musician, I'm never like, I have to do this to force somebody. Uh, it's just, I'm just creating. I just have so much here. I have so much here. I have so much just, I don't know why. I don't know where it comes from. It just does just come. And it's like, it seems to be limitless tap and that's cool. And I've for like 20 years been like, maybe it'll dissipate and still it hasn't. So, I mean, even if it was like it ended, it dissipated tomorrow. I'd be like, well, I got 20 years at uh, you know, that. So, but, uh, it just it, it just is here and I just create because I love it. And so I don't know. I was just telling my brother, I was like, man, I was like, dude, what if we just did another single, you know, to maybe like four, three, four months from now? And I was like, why not? You know, and it was it was like usually when I say something like that, <laughs> we just go forward. You know, what else is gonna be happening? Well this besides is, everything, yeah. but it yeah, besides but it's anything, still like whatever's next. But we still have that like that creative force to come out is just always there. It's always like thrumming, you know. I've been doing a lot of Stephen King reading and he writes a lot about a thrum that happens in like whether it's the bad guy or it's typically the bad force or something, there's like a thrum happening that's like always going. You know, it, it ebbs and flows and it'll be there and it'll be away and sometimes it's just like yeah you know in panic prayer it like fucking smashed me in the face it just overtook me you know and it i kept getting actually kept having too. like like dreams i kept having dreams of like the front cover i was like i, I kept seeing like like kind of like flashes of it like uh like lightning striking and you getting an image revealed to you in a in a cinematic type of way so I drew like what I saw, like, uh, and I typically draw some like pretty interesting <laughs> character renditions of what the records are. Um, I have like some little sketch and I'll send some rough sketch over to Goldsworthy. And then, man, that's why we call him Babe Ruth, because everything he sends back, he's like, oh, you know, and no pressure to that guy. My God, it's like fucking we call him Babe Ruth. Uh, and that's like the nickname that I'm not like a big nickname person. I'm not like I I call you Stymie Jim and, you know, that's your nickname. And we all everybody like try to get everybody to call you that. I don't have like nicknames for people, but it's like, damn, he has to be called Babe Ruth because that dude is like he's a fucking legend. Man. And he's like pointing out of the park where he's going to home run that joker. <laughs> Indeed. So many things to unpack. I love the, um, you know, just to kind of even dial it back again to that very that last convo it wasn't the first, but the last convo we all had together. Uh, I feel like in the two years since then, you guys have grown so much together across different mm. things on these releases. Oh, yeah. Like it's been so interesting to watch this evolution. And I, I don't know if you do anything else but make music. It seems like you guys are just full on recording, producing, just touring yeah. all the way full bore. And it's really gratifying to see like the two of you kind of like two amoebas in a Petri dish, like grow yeah. <laughs> uh, and spread, you know, it's been really, really yeah, fascinating. Yeah. There, there's That's like, cool. you know, what a, gr a good unit you guys are together for whatever you're working on. Mm, everything, you know, it, like we're about to, we leave in less than two weeks and we head to Europe. Uh, I have one show in Czech Republic uh, playing a festival with uh, Venom. And then I fly the next day immediately. I like leave the venue basically. And I go to the airport and I fly to, uh, I make my way to Bergen, Norway. And I meet up with the DSI guys. And then we do an entire uh, Euro leg and that ends the 20th. And I have, I get a show in uh, Germany with Venom, another show in Crete, Greece with Venom, and then two Polish shows. Then I'm back home three weeks. I do two shows with Hey Breed and then back jump on a Venom tour with uh yeah, with the boys. We're doing the second leg, which is the eastern side. So chaos, man. So we do do music and like right now I'm I'm mixing and I'm mixing other stuff. So it's just kind of like always happening, always turning. Actually, we were doing uh shipping out orders because we do all of our own stunts. So we were shipping out orders for uh, panic prayer so all those pre-orders are all going out packing shipping this mixing you know amazing I'll, in, re me. in reverse order i'll ask two more quick little questions before we do the track by track are you fill is that filling in for hate breed and that does that include that festival they're doing here in the states uh for matt oh no uh, uh sorry um uh, inhuman condition is actually opening oh, up you're opening. So we're doing 
Yeah, we're doing a Tampa show, which is our only show this year, our first mm. show this year. And then we're doing Orlando, which is also our, these are our first shows that we've done. These will be the only Florida things we're doing. The Unless some lightning strikes and we have this tour come through in November, this is going to be it. So <clears throat> All just right. a couple gigs for well, this maybe, year. Maybe there'll, just be some good will. Been so maybe there'll be some, some goodwill with Josta and uh, we can get you on Milwaukee Metal Fest next year with like all your bands. Oh man, that would be great. Uh, I know that there was talks about it already, so we'll see. Uh, you know, Sick. oh man, that that'd be awesome. I'll take just one band, actually. <laughs> Let's do right, one. Right, right, right. I'm not trying to kill all you. Of them is tough. I mean, I could do it, but whew. All right. right. And then, hey, congrats uh, on DSI. Just really quick, announcing new album, new record label. Mm, uh, heck yeah. Been doing the 30th anniversary thing, and I imagine these summer tours are the end of that, if at all. But I know Correct. there's a lot of, you know, just so much hype for a brand new DSI record, and I know you guys are going to mm. just smash it. So, oh um, man, it's excited. so far, so far, it's great. Uh, I love the material that they recorded. I think that they, I think above all, again, to use that word again, it's honest. They're, it's a very honest record on their part. So, this effort is, it's real it's them it's actually happened you know and it's a it's a time stamp of where they're at and i think it's a solid time stamp on their end so i think that any any fans of deicide would hear it and be able to walk away i mean you might not love every single track and then again you might love every single track but there's a lot of good in there to where you'd be like, wow, this is fucking solid. Every song has a little bit of magic in it, in my opinion. You know? And that's not just like, I'm not just biased. <laughs> I actually like the aside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're actually a fan. That makes it even more gratifying. Yeah. Uh, my co-host yeah. for one of my other podcasts, Nick, is a super duper deicide stan. So he's hype for like, he's been like, when is it coming? Like, he's very excited at this news. So cool. I think we're going to have, we're going to have some fun when that comes out. Maybe we'll do, he and I will do a pod where we review it because that's what we do we do vinyl reviews and oh, okay nerd, nerd awesome craft beer nerd outs and stuff like that so that's what we do hipster stuff for non-hipsters that's but, all right uh in human condition is the present and let's talk about this panic prayer albums out this week as we record this this is going to run a little later but let's just okay. do a quick track by track impressions i'll drop the name you give me any feedback you want to share okay it starts with civilized holocaust what a great name that one is, uh, it really is, uh, again, I guess I write about uh, societal oppressions, like most of us, you know, you're just like, it's, there's a lot of people who write about like, what's around us. Also, roosters run around the background, by the way, she's a great girl. Uh, so uh, I, I write about like, I mean, the, the world is eating itself. It's self digesting itself. It's like starting at the neck and then move down to the belly. And it's like literally just eating itself inside out. And uh, it's kind of alarming, actually, you know, <laughs> Like uh, all of us are, I'm sure that most of us are gobsmacked or like you don't even know what to do or what to even say about it. So you just try and write about these people in hopes that it illuminates something in them or illuminates something to where they notice it in somebody else and they can do something about it to fix their life and or to cause a smooth transition for them. Like whatever, whatever it is, is just get away from those people. I had to do that. It was really tough, man. I had to do like a really big cleansing of the the life in like my late twenties, early thirties, and I had to get away from people that I love. It was not good for me. And you know, if that's any type of like that all comes out in there, yeah, it's societal. <laughs> Some people are toxic, bro, and you gotta cut them out. Uh by the way, Goldens are the best breed of dogs. I love Goldens, and you, it looks like you oh, had a man. good girl there. Uh, she is the best. Like, yeah. the actual best dog. She's great. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, end credits is actually a song by Opeth. Final credits is the end second track on the EP. Now, listen. Final credits. My brother, all the time, I'm like, is it end credits? I'm like, no, that's Opeth, right? And he's like, I'm like, I know credits. I'm like, yes. Okay, cool. You know, so we went in that direction. We're aware. We're big Opeth fans. We're actually going to do one of those... Uh, all in one songs again for him and I like we're gonna we're just gonna take as long as it takes we're not gonna do it in a day but uh we're gonna do an Opeth style song just to release it just underneath smoke and mirrors because again uh why not you know final credits man I wrote that like the the lyrics um please grace us with the presence of your total death like I couldn't stop saying that for like weeks on end I just could not stop saying that like I woke up saying that I woke it's like that's actually how I got those lyrics because I woke up in the morning and was like I just keep thinking please invite me to the fucking end of you you suck <laughs> you suck and I'd love to be there 
and I'd love to watch it, you know, and who the fuck wouldn't and who does who can identify with that? I mean, there's been someone who has made you that upset. But this was uh, this was that it was like a big uh, inside me, all the clockless silence of death. That's like just like uh, big and oppressive. And then all those Mora sound keyboards that we threw in there to give it like that fucking haunt that everything's sitting on, which was a little adventurous, actually. I mean, we did we did we've done a bunch a bit of key stuff in the previous recordings but that that whole section was kind of like crutched on that you know so it became that which was like okay bold move you know but again it's an ep so you can do whatever you can kind of do whatever because they're you know it's an ep right know? with those keys and lyrics i got like a mayhem vibe maybe when, maybe it's time for the black metal uh in human condition record <laughs> Oh, we have a we have a black metal band called Dritskit. So uh, we could talk <laughs> about course. that after if you want. I can send you some stuff. I think sure, you please it. do. Please do. Yeah, it's it awesome. Uh, we already talked a little bit about Panic Prayer, but whatever else you want to share, let's talk about some riffs. Let's talk about vocals. Yeah, that whole uh, that whole like bridge part. Speaking about the technical part, that was really difficult to uh, was really difficult to write to because it was like, but I'm like, okay, I can't think about it too much, and I just started jotting down stuff, and that's when I came up with uh, "Feed Your God." And, and it's empty cup, the bottomless pit, which like the delivery on that is kind of a little bit like, I guess it's kind of like a little bit hip hop y because it's not like a it's not like a classic metal or rock hook. It's kind of like a little bit different and jumping in between, which I was like, that's kind of like Mashugi because he does that a lot where uh, Jens will be or Jens will be like, you know, he'll sing in some cadence because everything else is fucked up around him. You know, it's like, you're like, oh, okay. So you just kind of have to find some. So those lyrics, that pattern just kind of hit me. And ah, man, that those lyrics are, in my opinion, are some of the, my best work, I think, just because it's, it says a lot in just a tiny little clip. It says a whole lot in just a little bit. It was like a pretty stoked moment, you know. I don't know, I'm coming from being a drummer, so all of my, like, studio celebrations forever have been like, yeah, drums, this, or how is that pattern, or how is this, or these two flowed together, and then it's like a whole other dynamic as an artist, which is fantastic. Cool other direction just to paint in, like a whole other color palette. Very neat. So covering BOC's Godzilla for the fourth track, what was in your mind? Because this is very special and unique. I'm a massive BOC fan and I love this, but I'm the person that would love this track. And then you take on it's a for cover you. of a song so ubiquitous. That's yeah. everywhere. Everybody knows this song, for yeah. better or worse. Like... Yeah, did a very special take on. Thank you, and it was again honest and shameless because there is no shame. We love it. We love what we do, no matter what it is. Uh, and it's actually for you. It's for you. Like you're you're the target market. So perfect. You know that's it. Because if it strikes, it strikes, and if it doesn't, okay. But it's meant to. It's meant to be. You know for that. So I left the gym, and I'm like, I heard the song at the gym, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, yeah. It just makes sense. I was like in detuning and in with uh, with nasty guitars. It'll have a obituary vibe. It'll just truck along. And it was like, we should do it also pretty true to form. Let's just have a good time. You know, so that was it. So it was like, let's just have a good time. Because the original one, you could hear them. It sounds like they're having a, a hell of a time, you know. Oh, no. They say he's got to go. Go, go, go to love. Yeah. You know, they're like, they're jamming, man. They're down. That whole bridge section, they're like on it. You know, you tell they're having a great time. Anytime you hear BOC playing it live, they were having a good time. Probably maybe not the two millionth time that they've played it. Maybe they're over it. I don't know. <laughs> but the, you know, the earlier stuff is cool. And it was like, yeah, let's just go into it like that. I actually tracked all the vocals for that by myself. So that was the first time that I had done that. I just tracked all the stuff because uh, Taylor was disposed of. So we had all of, because uh, we recorded the new Dia side here. So we had like a cool vocal booth set up and we were all ready to rip. So I just pushed record, went over and did the thing and had a blast, man. I had a had a blast. So it was, uh, it was a weird choice. And it was, I was like, ah, either way, it'll be okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, either way, it'll be fine. But I think once we play that song live, I think everyone's going to have a good time because enough people know that chorus. It's pretty, like you said, it's, uh, you said ubiquitous. Uh, it's like synonymous with our upbringing, with our childhood, with like, that's our age, you know, maybe kids not so much, but that's okay. Most older death metal guys will hear it and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I know you that. Know, you can't do any worse than Barnes. So uh, with those covers, so like, you know, at least nope. so 
I went there. I don't care. Um, uh, and by the way, BOC is a band with, you know, historically two brothers, right, uh, who collaborate mm-hmm. and produce and write. So like very a similar little one there, like a, little, a, real, a nice coinky dink there for you. But anyhow, love the cover. Uh, and the video is Thank hilarious. Um, I love yeah, it. man, I my, love my buddy Daniel just this. he murdered it, man. It was so funny, man. I, he was like he sent back the first roughs and we were like, God, we're like no way <laughs> we're like yes if this isn't it then that's it you know we were like good cut print send let's go Pretty that's cool. it we should all be so lucky to have one of those uh go so quickly then the live tracks which i also thought was really cool to have and i think your fan base will look like suck that up they're gonna love that. It's a nice stop i always feel like a live release is a good stop gap between tours and between the next time they see you, which you said isn't going to be much this year. But uh, the, nope. f- the first of these four live tracks is The Mold Test. That song is a lot of fun, man. Like, I actually, I'm really proud of that video. So I, um, that video showed the, so I did all the cutting on that. And it showed like the similarities between uh, graveyards and uh, junkyards. They're, the, the concepts are exactly the same. Like we're, we just go to die somewhere and vehicles go to die and humans go to die. The song in general is, that was about, again, Christianity, man, I like really struggle with like organized religion. I think that it's just the biggest holdback for for better or for worse. And the positives there, there's a lot of positives to it, which that's where they get you because you're like, wow, I mean, that's like the whole good morals thing is like a fantastic concept and being kind to your brother. And there's so many good things in the Psalms and the book of Psalms. I mean, there's like really good positive messages in there and proverbs proverbs is fantastic you know we could read that as a coffee book and it would be like yeah great motivational speech you know there's like but man the dark side which is like unfortunately 80 percent of it 90 percent of it is it's like choking out our it's choking out our country it's choking out our world and it's like such an outdated thing but you know here we are i mean you can like whatever you like and not be an asshole that's possible you can really just like whatever you like and not be an asshole, not hide behind someone else to something else to give you like some false sense of something else. Like, ah, get it, get it out of here. Yeah, it's what, all, always, uh... what always bugs me is like, okay, those things were formed in a time when we didn't have the benefit of knowledge. We were superstitious, mm-hmm. scared little creatures that are 90% water. We didn't know much. We didn't have knowledge. So I understand mm-hmm. why, oh, you know, if you have a set of rules and morals that you tell everyone to follow, that's good for society. We don't need that yep. shit anymore. No. We're we're reckless either way. We're hateful either way. We're stupid either way. But we certainly have other avenues of knowledge now. So it's wild to me. But that's my soapbox. And I'm, we seem to be very well aligned on that. And again, yeah, I think you are so. living yeah, in yeah. Florida Man Central. So like, <laughs> you might, just like, I would be like every day, like, oh my God, every day. What the hell? It's, um, it's not as extreme. Like, you don't see too much of it here, as a matter of fact. It's just exacerbated because we have the, uh, uh, where are you at? What what state are you in? I'm in California, so you can, you can put two and two together. I'm in, I'm in the Bay Area, so we are. Right, right. We're, we're complicated and troubled, but we're liberal central, so which is fine. Uh, yeah, just here my style. Is, uh, we have the sunshine clause in our, I don't know if you know that. We have the sunshine clause for our news. So our news is made 100% public. So we're like the only state that has that. And the reason why we have that was so like big business and industry that was coming in in like the uh, early 20th century was uh, like the mouse. We all know who the mouse is. You guys have the mouse too. Uh, the mouse runs a lot in the state. My wife like has a good giggle because I say this a lot, but uh, they made it to where like businesses had to be, and they made it to where news had to be public. So everything, good, bad. That's why our arrest records are public. And that's why this, and so we are literally on display. We're on like a pedestal stool and no one else like because i mean you want to tell me that some real incredibly fucked up shit doesn't happen in appalachian like up there in that area i mean stuff goes on there that would probably make a billy goat puke and that's a glenn benton quote so that's a good one but it would make a fucking goat puke the goat would see it and be like ah holy shit that's terrible that is fucking terrible but it'll never make the news because they're Their news is clamped down and the whole state doesn't allow that just to be on public record because, oh, my God, what would they think of us? You know, so we're down here like (laughs) like everyone's like, you guys are ridiculous and Florida this and Florida's horrible. And it's like, yeah, it's so it's so like we don't see that stuff every single day. Stuff does go on and it is very Florida. You know, it is that. But I mean, no more than the next place, I guess, is what I'm getting at. I mean, there's yeah, there's there's spooky shit everywhere. Like like uh, Pittsburgh, uh, like uh, around that area. I mean, holy crap. 
Yeah, Philadelphia, um, the, the hills of West Virginia. You know, I'm telling you, stuff goes down. Boston has had a ser- an uncaught serial killer for like ten years. People just disappear and they don't know what to do, and the police never say anything. It's like uh, everybody yeah. knows there's a serial killer in Boston. Anyway, fun times. Uh, Recycled hate <laughs> is the next track on the EP. Man, that one uh, that one's a lot of fun. Uh, going back to that, that was another one written by Paul Mazurkiewicz. He wrote the the lyrics and he wrote the patterns. That one's great, man. That one's like high energy, start to finish. It's just like a banger, you know. And it was it ended up being like one of my favorite ones to play live on that tour. So that's all from the Dia side tour that we did. That was killer, a lot of fun. Right on. Uh, I always struggle with this one, but I'm I'm gonna say it's euphoriophobia is the next euphoriophobia. All right, yeah, that one. Uh, uh, man, that was like the the jump off that we did. That was the first one that we released. And it was like, here we are, world. You know, it's like right out of the gate. <laughs> Just thrashing and going for it. So another ripper live. It's like another ripper. Like all of these, uh, Taylor wrote the lyrics for that. That one has a really cool vibe, a really cool cadence. Amazing. And then the last track on the EP is The Next Step. The yeah, Next I like Step. That. I like that song so much. Man. So good, yeah. It's so good. It's so good live. And that's like where I like say like fucked up shit like push your neighbor over. It's like fuck that person up. You know, I, I like to try and uh, find a, a pit monitor and somebody who can like run the fucking ship and then like keep everybody to go and keep everyone hyped safely and be like no elbows throwing because my fucking god that shit's like haunting me man like my, my heart like really like as soon as i read that i was like gutted wow i don't even know the fella but i could only imagine i've been a crew guy i've been on tour i've been on tour with a band that i like i went out and watched the band that i like you know i maybe have even moshed and to even think of that stuff happening is horrendous i can't imagine how bad like the bands felt I, i'm anything i mean well, the whole thing, uh, people who had to see it anyways, but that song evokes those types of things, you know, and it, it, it evokes that anger and that aggression and gets that, yeah, gets that out in, in whatever way, well, I guess, whatever way, I just got to do it safely. Jeez. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course, again, we don't want any of this to, it could just be a fluke thing, um, mm-hmm. like DeMar Hamlin and, and then the Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals football game a few months, you know, last season could just be a fluke okay. thing. A random thing. I'm not aware of what happened with him. Oh, uh, he was uh, making a ta- – he was trying to make a tackle, the uh, Buffalo Bills versus Cincinnati Bengals, and he ended up having – he got hit, like, in such a spot on his chest under his pads that he had a heart attack, and he was – uh Oh, well. Uh revived and then recovered and he's okay now oh uh, and then they wow. fr- like he had been for years you know he was kind of like a defensive back on the bills he's from pittsburgh and he'd been fundraising like many years for um christmas gifts for impoverished kids and people gave uh-huh. like 10 million dollars to his foundation while he was in a coma so like oh my God. humanity is weird it's crazy it's terrible sometimes it's great uh, it's the same thing like the uh, Year of the Knife band that was in a horrible van crash. A lot of people are donating. The singer is still in a medically, you know, has been in a medically induced coma. I think they're waking up and responding now, but like it's to be slow to come back from a terrible thing. So like sometimes yeah, people will yeah. surprise you. Other times they just want to slaughter you all. But <laughs> I swear yeah. I'm a good, well-adjusted person. Just I like the music. <laughs> I'm not a bad guy. The music is bad. No, the music is great. It's I don't know. Anyway, we're not to we're not here to solve the world's problems, but no. so so you know, this is a great little stop gap until whatever you guys do next. And and I really I hope everybody goes out and gets this thing. These have been too you know, just so great. These releases have been so great. Um Let's talk for a second about four because just I just have to get it out there. This is the best punk record of the year. Except for like oh, one other you. record I can think of that's not purely punk rock. It's kind of hybrid. This record is okay. so fun. It's so badass. It reminded me of so many things. It's got like crossover. It's got like mm-hmm. early rise against fat wreck, hot punk, warp tour shit. Just incredible. And then it's hilarious. Like again, Four Skin is the album name. The Macho yeah. Man plays prominently in the visuals. Yeah, we, like, we gave out... Uh... We gave out bananas and uh, oven mitts. Oven mitts for bro. like box sets. <laughs> Ooh yeah! Let's get into some Macho Man and some Four. What? Why a punk side project at all? And why is this thing so good? I, ha- I have no words. How good this? Thing. Uh, man, thank you. And uh, it it's really was just born. It was born out of the pandemic. You know, we're just sitting there and like I like a lot of skate punk. Uh, my my brother likes a lot of skate punk. You know. When we grew up, for him, his like, if we have to go like big, big band, it was, uh, he loved the offspring, you know, and then he liked a lot of stuff underneath that, you know, 
And then for me, it was like my, I guess my big band that I liked was No Effects. And then I liked a lot of stuff underneath that. Bad Religion, Pennywise, uh, Lagwagon, uh, Diesel Boy. Um, geez, uh, there was like a pretty big period of my time where I skateboarded and listened to the shit out of punk rock. Also while listening to death metal. Also while listening to hip hop. All of these things were all happening at the same time. There was no real line of separation for me. I may have at that point in time, maybe have dressed a little more like a skater, but my musical taste was always just it was just vast but punk was always there i always loved that shit i loved it because it was fast and like i loved the stuff in no effects that reminded me of death metal like i thought that that was killer i thought that that was killer man like uh i can't remember the name of the song it's like the quaz or whatever it's a uh, track like six or seven off of punk and drublick and it's like it's just a thrash beat and it's like over this killer sick riff and it's like wow that's like almost like death metal I'm like wow that's great fast forward to just all these years later where we're sitting at the pandemic at the head of it and was like ah oh, man we should make a we had just done all the all-in-one things and it was like we should have a punk band like why don't we do why not there's no well because first we were trying to like find anything that any of those bands had released that was new that was good and we couldn't find anything like nothing was like none of them were doing that and that's okay they're allowed to grow and they're allowed to be musicians and they're allowed to just want something else for the rest of their life they're allowed that and that's their leisure you know like offspring doesn't have to put out a basically thrash record again they don't have to do that if they want to they could if bad religion wanted to put out like a, an old school record they would i mean they just did during the pandemic they streamed and they did like two shows and those were so sick they were so sick. And it was like, cool. It was like, yeah, they're doing all that stuff. But their new record is not that. And so we were just like, let's make let's make this band happen. And we just made a band happen. And two of those guys were guys that we had did the all-in-one project. And uh, we released the first record, Four Hombres. And that was a lot of fun, which that's also funny. And then the, instantly we knew we were going to have the skin record. We had the title before we even started breaking ground on it, it was like yeah that's clearly it you know <laughs> why why not you know and that's why i went that direction of doing the uh, uh reimagining the regurgitate cover because why not you know we reimagined the first we reimagined uh Def Le uh deep purple in rock we reimagined that with like the idea of like trace ombres behind it you know from uh zz top because why not you know so it's it's just kind of like that i was like why not why shouldn't we do this and then this second record totally surprised me. When we were all said and done with it, I'm like, oh my God, I love these songs way more than I thought I would have. I love them so much more. Like I can listen to everyone and like every every single one has like a hook for me where I'm like, yeah, that's, and that was the point is to like write music that we could listen to. It doesn't necessarily, I mean, I wish that like, Bad Religion put this record out because I would be like, oh, I would be so stoked on it. I'd be like, holy shit. Have you heard this new Bad Religion? I'd be like, wow, this is badass. And I would spread it to everybody, you know, because we all like to share music. That's, uh, that's a form of communication, right? Like, you and I are talking because of music and you talk to your buddy because of music. And, you know, you may see someone at the store and you guys talk because, hey, nice carcass shirt. And you'd be like, oh, sweet deicide shirt, you know, blah, blah. Have you heard this? No, I haven't check this out you might like it cool i will you know and then bam then you got friendship and you got community and you got energy exchange you know i just right had to on. make my own band that i wanted to hear <laughs> i hope so we hope so that's the goal uh i have told so many people about this four record i hope it's worked i hope it's paid off in some sales uh i definitely should have got you. in on the oven mitt bundle i definitely have regrets but it was so good oh, it's all right this record is so good i know it was like limited to like 100 or less uh, as it mm. would have to be how would you even this is even the merch is madness like it's so fun um <laughs> yeah, it's a maybe silly. we need like a plushy banana uh a fa a with a uh, macho man's head on it or something i don't know no maybe that would be very funny war has that adult toys without getting too perverse and getting yes, they demonetized. Do. yes they do so maybe there's a maybe there's a full maybe someday maybe ep, maybe Epitaph will reach out to the band and sign you guys that would be insane to do you like know, another record okay. and have Epitaph put it out and then put the third record out and then it's uh, that's the one you know cool I, and you know, we're we're always like man we'd love to play with this band it's just like there's no real market like the punk rock market is like more they're more gatekeepery than us metalheads I mean they're like real gatekeepery it's like it's like a secret society and that's okay you know. It actually, it actually is kind of like more akin to like rock, you know, like the rock market is like difficult to break into because there's like a million doors shut. There's already like 1 million doors already closed. And it's like, well, and that's the problem is like getting someone to hear it, you know, getting them to hear the songs and be able to digest them and be like, wow, what is this? like, I, I dig this. And it takes word of mouth. So, uh, man, 200%. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. It means a I lot. 
Yeah, of course. I know you don't have a lot of free time, but I would say if you get a chance to get to Vegas and go to the Fat Mike is involved with the Punk Rock Museum that just opened there. And I went and it was insane. And I had a tour. I had a tour given by Greg Hetson for Bad Religion. I got to meet him. He gave me a guitar pick. I was like, no way. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. So they have the museum by itself, which is amazing. And then you can pay a little more money and be shown around with anecdotes and stories by famous punkers. Mike does it sometimes. Luigi cool. Miorga from Suicidal, OG bass player from Suicidal is there. Uh, they have people oh. come into town and just do, you know, hosted uh, tours of the museum. And I have to say it's legit. They have every scene. They have countries. They have it all. It was really beautifully done. I was... Not a hardcore cool. kid growing up, but in general, I love punk rock. And I was more of a metal kid, but like I grew up in New York City. You can't get away from punk history. Yeah, it's, it's part all of you. there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. part of you. And he and it was really well yeah. done. It was pretty funny actually. He was like, "Does anybody know about New York hardcore? Because I don't know that much." This is Greg, right? He's like, "I was in the West Coast and we were doing pop punk, and I didn't know much about the hardcore stuff except what was local to me." I was like, "I do a little," <laughs> uh, and then it was fun. So, um, and they have a jam cool. room where you can play people's famous instruments. And I like I picked up like Fishbone's bass and played like Everyday Sunshine for two seconds that I know. And like, so awesome. it's, you know, you can play Fat Mike's guitar from from Punk and Drublick and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So it's really no great. shit. It's really that's great. really cool. Yeah, it's that's like it. a fucking experience. Huh? It was, OK, cool. it was an experience. Very cool. It was. And that's in Vegas. Good to know. That's, Good to know. Yeah. Next time you go to Vegas, if you've got some time, I know you don't have a lot yeah. of time, but if you have some time, make time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, that sounds like a, that sounds like it'd be awesome. As we wind this up, you also mentioned you have a black metal band that i did not know about uh yeah uh, tell us about man we made that band a long time ago so we were in a band called infernion and it was sort of like black and death metal and we had a lot more black metal after that so once we stopped that we started our own band called and this band okay so this again like this is how this stuff happens like we were high on the river riding uh riding in a canoe we get to this like point where this point in this particular point in this river is like a merging there's like four different things that like uh converge on this one area and it's a pretty magical area and like uh, the energy is there is good the wind is amazing it's like in a perfect little spot it's kind of like just a it's just and it's beautiful i had this idea like we had a friend of ours in three weeks they were doing a local show and they were looking for bands and taylor and i were doing the absence and we had no there's no chance for the absence to do a show so it was like why don't we make a two-man punk group we said that it was like why don't we do it uh, make a new band and then do uh uh just play the show. No, we can't do punk. It'll be too difficult, right? It was like, it would be too difficult to sing that, right? That's what we're in our heads. That's what we were saying. So it was like, well, let's do a two-man black metal group. Let's do it. So we called it Drit. So Drit is D-R-I-T-T is it's three, and that's shit in Norwegian. And Skit is Huit. So it's really Drit Huit. It's a really dumb name, but Drit Skit. So it's shit, shit. My moniker was Lort Horn. So I took my name first from Lort is like uh, like something from, uh, what was it? It means shit in like, I think Czech Republic. So it's like Lort Horns. And the horns was from the dude from, I can't remember his name, but the dude from Lucifer's Friends. It's the keyboard player. It's something horns. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, so we just took these silly monikers and whatever, uh, we'd set up a photo shoot with wolves. It was actually the first time that I met my wife. Uh, so she, we hired her as a photographer to come in and take a, take photos of us and we did corpse paint and we found wolves in Florida, which is real tough to do by the way, uh, found some wolves, took, uh, did a photo shoot, wrote and recorded five songs, made EPs, uh, set them up, played with backing bass tracks, played with backing keyboards, brought our own light show, brought our own piece. PA. we made it like a like a fucking event right and we did all this within three weeks and originally it was just kind of like let's see if we can do it and uh you know we did a cover of angry chair by allison chains and that got some uh that got a little bit of love on metal injection and stuff like that and then we have another we did another recording um which we haven't released yet we were talking about maybe even just now getting around to it it's like six or seven years later but it's a uh it's a 13 minute epic that uh, features Andreas Kisser from Sepultura doing uh, guest vocals. He does a uh, guest screaming, which because his vocals are like super black metal. We were on tour and it was like, dude, did you do some guest vocals? And he was like, yeah, sure. I've never done that. It was like, cool. <laughs> Let's do it. Anyway, so yeah, that band kicks ass, man. It's like really brutal. And it's like kind of like an extension from where Infernia was at, but it's a lot more black metal. So I'll have to send you a link to what we have released now. And uh, I feel like the out because I'm such an Alice in Chains freak too. I think that's familiar to me. And then I forgot about the rest of it because too many bands. The shelf can only hold so much. But uh, 
Thanks Tell for me sharing. About it. <laughs> uh, dude, like, I don't know how you do it, but I'm glad you do. And uh, congrats on this record. Congrats on all the things. Best to you Thank and you. Taylor and your brother and the whole gang, the whole shebang. And, and uh, you know, keep it going, man. Just uh, uh, this has been so fun. Such a fun journey to watch. And thank you for sharing it. And be safe out there again. Please be safe on the road everywhere you go. Thank you. And, uh, you know, just, you know, keep doing the thing. We appreciate you so much. All right, brother. Okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, see you next time.